tutorial from Pinnacle Studio Pro. Today we're doing a tutorial on the scope effect. Let's get into it. Now if you're going to make a scope, you want to make one that is on point, looks good, you can move around in the video, get some movement to make it look realistic. So I'm going to show you how to make the scope, then I'm going to show you how to work with it in Pinnacle Studio so it looks smooth. So, you can use a lot of different programs to make the scope. You can use things like Paint.net. You can use Adobe Photoshop Elements. You can use Adobe Photoshop CX something. Cares which one. You can use them to make this scope. I'm going to use Paint.net. Paint.net is a free program. Which you can get online. The link to that program is in the description of this video. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to open up Paint.net. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do File, New, and I'm going to set the size of my canvas. I'm going to do 3840 by 2160. Now, I'm making it that size because that's basically double the size of HD, which is 1920 by 1080, and I want to be able to move the scope around in the video so it looks like I'm moving my scope to a position. So I want to have extra black all around it. Making the canvas this size will do that for me. Now I'm going to click OK. Now I stated I want extra black in the video, so I got to change this white canvas to black. So my primary color right now is set to black. If it's not, I'm going to click on it down here and choose black. I'm going to click on the paint bucket. And I'm going to click on the canvas. And now my canvas is black. Next thing I need to do is create the scope, the circle that you're going to be looking through at whatever it is that you're targeting. So I'm going to go to the ellipse tool. I'm going to click on that with the left mouse click. I'm going to go somewhere near the middle of this uh, canvas. And I'm going to left click and drag this out to create the circle. If I don't like it, I can just do edit and undo. I can try it again. Try to get it kind of centered. And I think that's pretty good there. Now that I have my circle here, I'm going to hit the delete key on my keyboard and it will delete the area inside that circle, making it see through and transparent. So whatever's playing in my video behind this black canvas, I will be able to see in the middle here. These uh, white and gray checkerboards mean that it is see-through. The next thing I want to do is, it's going to be hard to work on this with such a small little circle here. And the reason why it's so small is because, like I said, once I put it in the video editing program, I can zoom in and size this up to make the circle as big as I want. I'm going to make it small here so I have a lot of black space around it. But while I'm working on it in paint.net, I want it bigger so I can see better. So I'm going to go to view. I'm going to hit zoom in. And I'm going to just do that a few more times until it gets to a size that I want to work with. I think that's a pretty good size there. So I'm going to go to the selection tool real quick and just move this over a little bit. Alright, good to go. So now I need to create my lines in my scope. So I'm going to start off by using the rectangle tool. I'm going to left click on this. I'm going to try to get this near the middle of the circle. I'm going to start above in the black section. I'm going to pull this down 
all the way down till I'm at the bottom part here. And the reason why I started above it is because if I make a mistake and I want to start over, I can go back up here and start again. I don't have to do undo or anything like that. So I think this is pretty good. It's done pretty well. So I'm going to go to the paint bucket now. I'm going to left click on paint bucket. It's still set to black. I'm going to put my cursor inside of here and I'm going to left click. Now I have a black line down the middle. I'm going to do the same thing. Go back to the rectangle tool. I'm going to start outside of the circle. And I'm going to... I didn't like that too much. I'm going to drag this across. I don't like that too much either. Let's try one more time for good luck. There you go. So I'm going to drag this left click and drag it all the way across. I'm going to click on the paint bucket tool again. I'm going to left click in here. And left click in here. I missed. I'm going to do edit and undo to get rid of that. Make sure my cursor is inside of this area. I didn't like that for some strange reason. There you go. So now I got my two lines. And I'm ready to do my next move. Now I can leave it like this if I want to, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to add a little bit more to it. So I'm going to click on the rectangle tool again. And you may see a theme, a reoccurring theme here with this rectangle tool and this paint bucket. I'm going to drag this across and make a smaller section that's a little bit thicker. To make it look a little bit more professional and realistic. The real scope here. That's pretty good. Go back to my paint bucket tool. Make these black. And see the theme. So what I'm going to do is make the rest of these going around here. And when I come back, we'll talk about the next part. Alright. Now we got our scope almost completed. We got our crosshairs all set up. Now all we need to do is one last step. You can stop here if you want to. This is enough for you. You tired? You ready to take a break? You ready to take a nap or something? Stop. Go ahead. Take your nap. Be lazy when it comes to your scope. But if you want to go all the way out there, follow this next step. I'm going to go ahead and click on the line or the curve tool. I'm going to left click on that. And then I'm going to bring my crosshairs across here. And I'm going to do a left click and make a straight line across to the other side. I'm going to keep doing that all the way across the top and the bottom. Or the top to the bottom. And then from one side to the other side. Like so. Until I'm complete. So I'm going to go all the way across this side. All the way from the top to the bottom. It's going to take a long time. Alright. I'm not going to waste my time and yours with you watching me make all these itty bitty lines all the way across. Let's just go ahead. Put this scope into our Pinnacle Studio 16. And check out how to make it look fantastic. So now all we need to do is we just have to save it. Now we got to save it as a PNG image. If we don't save it as a PNG image, all of this white and gray checkerboard in here will not be see-through when we put it in Pinnacle Studio 16. So I'm going to go to File, Save As, and I'm going to give it a name like Scope. Save it in my picture, save it in the location I want it, click on save, and make sure that it is a PNG file. Got a lot of choices on here, so make sure you choose PNG, because if you don't, like I said, the white and gray checkerboards will not be see-through. Click on save. It will give you a little preview of everything. Don't worry about it, everything's going to look black. Unless you can scroll to the scope part and see it. Just click on OK. 
it will save your image and that's a wrap now all we need to do is put this in Pinnacle Studio 16 and show you how to get some nice movement show you how to make it look uh, more realistic in our video editing software let's do it here we are in Pinnacle Studio 16 now as you can see Pinnacle Studio 16 already recognized where I saved the scope so it shows it here went to the folder for it and I already have my footage down in the timeline so as you all can see Bambi's going down bye bye Bambi to all you vegetarians and animal lovers out there don't call Peter on me right it's just a freaking video so let's get into it what I need to do now is I need to go ahead and left click on the scope and I need to drag it down into the timeline above the footage of the deer or whoever you're shooting or whatever it is so I want to left click on it and drag it back to the beginning of this clip and I want to hover my mouse over the orange line till I see a white line appear left click and drag it out to match the length of the footage beneath it now you can see that uh, Pinnacle Studio 16 Ultimate went ahead and made it the uh, same size as the preferences that I have, a 1080p, 16 by 9. But I made it bigger than that, and the reason why is because I'm going to blow this up, and I won't have any distortion or pixelation when I do that, because I made this picture actually bigger than the uh, 1080p. So I'm going to right-click on the scope, and I'm going to go to Open Effects Editor. First thing I want to do is blow the scope up, make it fit onto the scene, and make the scope actually move across the screen with the deer or with whoever you are shooting or whatever. First thing I need to do is I need to see the stuff beneath it. So down here where it says solo, there's a little drop down arrow. I'm going to click on that little drop down arrow with a left mouse click. And I'm going to click on show media and tracks below. For the next part, you can use Pan and Zoom, or you can use uh, 2D Editor Advanced. I'm going to use 2D Editor Advanced. So I'm going to go to 2D 3D. I'm going to left click on that. And I'm going to go to 2D Editor Advanced, and I'm going to left click on it. So I need to change this from default to no preset to get that little hovering scope out of there. Now, first thing I want to do is blow this bad boy up. So I'm going to make it bigger, and remember, the reason why I'm making it bigger is because, first and foremost, I want to get the whole deer in there. And then secondly, there's going to be a lot of black on the outside of the frame of reference. So when I start to move the scope, if I didn't blow it up, you'd see the actual background. So now that I'm blowing it up, you're going to see black when I move the scope around. So that really helps me uh, be able to make it more realistic. So I'm just going to left-click on this 173, and I'm going to change it to a... A number that I want and that's a good size for me next I'm gonna click on position it's a drop down arrow and I'm going to move it horizontally over to where I want it to be matter of fact we're on the end of the clip so I need to go to the beginning I need to go to the beginning because when I start to use keyframes which I'm gonna do in a second to move the scope I need the uh, point of reference to start to be set up before I start keyframing it. So I'm going to move this over. I'm going to put a number in there that I like. And then for the vertical, just make sure you get it where you want it on the vertical. You can use the slider. I'm going to put a number in here that I want it at. And that's good. Now, I made a point of reference where the, the fur goes from dark to light. You should make a point of reference when you do your scope too because that way when you keyframe it, you can make sure that you keep your crosshairs at a specific position that you can remember as you go through your keyframes. So now that I have it set up for the starting position, I'm going to go ahead and click on, on the uh, turn on and off keyframing. You'll see now the keyframe uh, settings show up on the bottom. And I'm going to move this to a position where I like I'm gonna make a keyframe here I'm gonna 
pull this over a little bit. And I like that there. Now, one thing that you might want to do. Um, I'm just going to do it this way because I'm pretty good at doing keyframes and I can kind of tell when I need to make an adjustment and if I miss it, I can pretty much fix it pretty easily. But you may want to do this instead. If you want it to be really, really smooth and you want it to really, really follow exactly along as uh, the deer is moving, then you might want to use a one frame forward process. It means you click this button, it says one frame forward. And if you see something that you don't like or you like, need to change the position of the crosshairs, then you can do it. I don't need to really, but just to show you an example, I can click on the horizontal now. Hit backspace and put in new parameters and it'll move the crosshairs where I want it. Or I could just move the slider. So once again, you would step to the next position that you want when you see something that you don't like. Click on the horizontal or the vertical, whichever one you're going to change. And move your crosshairs over. So you just keep doing that. As you go along and keep making the adjustments as you create keyframes. So I'm not going to torture you by making you watch me make all these keyframes. And I'm not going to torture myself by making all these keyframes for a second time. All right. So when I come back, we're going to get to the next step in the process. All right, we're back. And as you can see, I have all the keyframes set up the way that I want them to be. And if I hit play, you'll see that the scope and the crosshairs follows the deer across the plane and gets ready to take aim and splatter him all over the whatever that heck that place is. But anyway, we're all set up there. So... If you notice when I hit play on this, it's pretty smooth. The the scope goes across, the crosshairs and the scope go across pretty smoothly. That's not really too realistic. You want to have some movement because I don't care how good of a sharpshooter you are, you're going to shake a little bit, okay? You're going to shake. So what we need to do is we need to go ahead and add in some shake to this. And the easiest way to do that is with the earthquake effect. So I'm going to go to camera and I'm going to go to earthquake and now what I'm going to do is leave it on a default. I'm going to go to settings and this is really up to your preference. I'm going to change the intensity and change that down to 0 0.22. I'm going to change the shake speed down to 0 0.09 now you know that if you've used the earthquake effect before it shakes a lot so you got to kind of bring these down a, a bunch so if i hit play you'll notice now that there's some shake going on with the movement of the scope which makes it look much more realistic so i'm going to hit ok let that bad boy render out and take aim on Bambi, baby, because it's a wrap. That's it. How to do the scope effect. Pinnacle Studio 16 Ultimate. You guys know the routine. I shouldn't have to keep saying this every video, but I guess I do. Because some people don't know the routine, obviously. Because some people watch and they don't click the thumb that's pointed in the upward direction. Click it, like it, live it, love it, hug it. Okay? If you like the content, let people know. Click the like button. Also, leave me your comments. Okay? I always get back to you. If I can't answer your question, I'll point you in the right direction. And I will help you get the help you deserve. 
Because you do deserve it. You bought this. You deserve some help if you bought it. And you don't know something's going wrong. You got all kind of issues. You need help, people. Sometimes we all need a helping hand. We are the... No, okay. Anyway, I ain't going to sing again. Um, And last, but definitely not least, don't you ever forget to subscribe thanks for watching we'll see you again soon Thank <laughs> you.